Jennifer Miriam Saxon, vicar here at St. Andrews in Hall River. We're glad that if you are a visitor that you have joined us. And for those of you who are members, it's good to have you worshiping with us this morning. A couple of quick announcements. Uh, next Sunday, November 15th, we will do another um, outside Eucharist, weather permitting. Um, it will be at two o'clock and I will send out a message telling you how to sign up to come because as you remember, we can only have 25 people there. Um, but look for the link soon. And if you can't find it, just call me. Um, uh, at 11.30 today, we'll have our usual coffee hour to say hello to everybody. Um, I hope you will join us. And then two final announcements. Every Wednesday now, um, we do morning prayer at nine. And I am remaining and leaving the, door, the church open for anyone who'd just like to return to that sacred space and sit there in prayer. I will leave it open from nine till noon every Wednesday. And lastly, if you have not sent in your 2021 pledge forms, please do that. They are due this week. So let us observe a moment of silence and then we will begin worship using beginning at page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world that we might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God, and heirs of eternal life. Grant that having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Amos. Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light. As if someone fled from a lion, fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. It is not the day of the Lord, is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light and gloom with no brightness in it. I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The word of the Lord. The psalm selected for this Sunday is Psalm 70, 
which is found on page 682 in the Book of Common Prayer. You may read it in unison or responsively by whole verse. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be ashamed and altogether dismayed. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, aha, and gloat over me turn back because they are ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me speedily, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tarry. Thanks be to God. Please join me in singing hymn 690, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. reading from 1 Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with the cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them, to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in singing hymn 544, Jesus Shall Reign Where'er the Sun. Dwell on his 
is low with sweetest song, and infant voices shall proclaim their early blessings on his name. Let every creature rise and bring peculiar honors to our King. Angels descend with songs again, and earth repeat aloud, Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flask of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, look! Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please join me in singing a spiritual. This is Keep Your Lamps Trimmed and Burning. Keep your lamps trimmed and burning. Keep your lamps trimmed and burning. Keep your lamps trimmed and burning see what the lord has done troubles and trials are almost over troubles and trials are almost over troubles and trials are almost over see what the lord has done many are gone but not forgotten many are gone but not forgotten many are gone but not forgotten see what the lord has done children don't you worry children don't you worry children don't you worry see what the lord has done keep your lips trimmed and burning keep your lamps trimmed and burning keep your lamps trimmed and burning see what the lord has done thank you megan Welcome, children. Um, as you can see, I am now showing you where I really am, which is not at the church. But it's the only way I can show you pictures in this book I want to read to you. It's very short, but I'm reading it to you because it, it ties to what I'm going to tell your grown-ups when I, read, when I uh, offer the adult homily, which is about God wanting us to do good things for each other, not just come to church and say our prayers, but to also live a life that models what God would have us do. So here's the book, it's called All That You Are. Today is a day to celebrate you because 
you follow your dreams. You walk with confidence. Even on a tight wire sometimes. You stand with courage. See that dragon? Woo! Gotta be brave. When others need help, you take responsibility. There's somebody going out in the storm to help. You are generous. I love that picture. Somebody read. You listen with your heart. Isn't that a nice picture? You live with compassion. You forgive. See that little person forgiving the elephant that stepped on their bike and smashed it? You are a loyal friend. You go see your friends when they're sick. You embrace peace, peace for the whole world. You give joy, you are the gift. And each of you are a gift and treasured by God. I love you all too. Hope your week goes well. Won't you sing a song with me? This is hymn 490, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I want to see the brightness of God. I want to look at Jesus. Clear sun of righteousness shine on my path and show me the way to the Father. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lord is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Most of us might agree that 2020 is a year we will be grateful to see come to an end in just under two months. It's been a year filled with sickness, fear, anxiety, grief, and chaos at a level previously unimaginable. No wonder a young African-American man who came to our doors for assistance told me that he and many he knows believe that the visions recorded in the book of Revelation are coming true, and this is the end time. He feels stressed about our suffering, but rejoices that Christ is coming soon. I listened to him empathetically but I shared with him that I personally don't spend much time worrying about the end time. 
even though I have come to love many of the powerful and often beautiful images portrayed in Revelation. I leave the second coming in God's hands alone because, as we hear in Paul's letter to the church in Thessalonica, since the earliest days of the church, Christians have thought that Christ was returning in their lifetimes, and he has not done so yet all these thousands of years since the resurrection. But this young man's statements reminded me of a time about 10 or 15 years ago when John, my beloved husband, was working in our yard at the time that evangelizers from the nearby Welcome Baptist Church came up our driveway. I thankfully was not at home, but John loves theological discussions, so he was happy to stop his work to listen to what they had to say, which was about how to be saved in order to get into heaven. When they finished, they asked John what he thought about the rewards waiting for him in heaven. John told them that he does not spend much time thinking about heaven because he's focused just upon this life and being the best person he can be here and now. I thought that was a great answer, as God does want us to be ethical and loving people. You know, the love God, love your neighbor as yourself commandments. But this was apparently anathema to the good evangelist from Welcome Baptist Church because they immediately informed John that his answer showed that he is going to hell. And then they got in the car and drove off. Unlike those visitors who engaged John, Amos had harsh words for the Israelites who felt that their faithful worship practices would save them on the day of judgment. Not so, says Amos. Instead, Amos teaches that as much as God loves us, God also expects much of us. God expects more than worship alone or the singular concern about one's personal salvation. God expects ongoing and sacrificial acts of mercy, justice, integrity, and righteousness, all done in love for God and for one another. One preacher on this text, the Reverend Noel York Simmons, emphasizes this truth that God expects more from God's people. She notes that the people Amos is addressing expected the day of the Lord to be a joyful celebration, a day for which they only have to wait passively. For them, and perhaps for us, worship has become a way to pass the time to honor God for the goodness bestowed upon the people and to celebrate their status as the chosen. But Amos says, quoting God directly, that God is furious with this passive and entitled attitude, an attitude under which the sick suffer unaided and the poor starve unheeded. Justice and mercy are of the highest priority for our God. Yet justice is not seen by God amongst the Israelites to whom Amos speaks, nor can we say justice is a priority for us today when we permit people to go without adequate food or health care or freedom from social injustices and racial inequities. Note that Amos says the day of the Lord will bring the coming of our unexpected God in a day of darkness, not light a day when one will flee from a lion, but will turn and run into a bear. The judgment day for our unexpected God will be when the great waters of justice roll down upon us. Yet unlike Noah's flood, this flood will not kill, but will cleanse, filling us with God-like righteousness and reorienting us to that which is of utmost importance, which is a right relationship with God through love and compassion for one another. But the prophesied day of the Lord has not yet come, and we undeniably are not causing justice to roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. 
Amos would literally shout at us for our callousness and selfishness, especially in the year of our Lord 2020. All of us around, all around us, we hear even professed, professed Christians not caring for others as they do for themselves. Many of us Episcopalians are distressed to see professed Christians putting the opening up of their church spaces ahead of caring for each other, services held without the use of masks, not distancing from one another in the church pews, not limiting the number of people permitted in the worship space. As one non-denominational church in Charlotte demonstrated last month, this only makes a church a sponsor of super spreader events and the church a place of avoidable sickness and death. Amos would rail against these Christians for not living up to God's expectations of caring for one another above all else. Such worship events indeed place worship above love of neighbor, and Amos says such an attitude is an abomination to God. This is the Sunday after one of our most div divisive elections in my lifetime. It seems providential that today the harsh words of Amos about the day of the Lord being darkness, not light, is paired with the parable of the wise and foolish maidens. Hence, I was grateful to read David Luce's commentary in which he noted the rele relevance of this parable for analyzing our national election. He says that Jesus' story seems to focus upon the severity of judgment for the foolish maidens who failed to be prepared for the delayed arrival of the bridegroom. While acknowledging that there are many ways to preach about this parable, David Luce comments that perhaps what is most striking is the confinement of judgment to one character, the bridegroom. Judgment is reserved to the only one who can truly judge. Even the wise young women do not judge the foolish ones. They merely refuse to share their all and send the foolish women to the shopkeepers. In Jesus' parables as recorded in Matthew, Matthew consistently reserves judgment for the Lord and the Lord alone. And perhaps we can try to do the same. This is, that is, in the wake of all that took place on November 3rd, and after months of acrimony and accusation, perhaps the fundamental question before us on this post-election Sunday is this. Can we regard those in our congregation who voted differently than we did as fellow and faithful Christians? And more broadly, can we regard those in our larger community and country as fellow children of God deserving of not just God's love, which is promised, but of our respect as well. And by doing this, leave judgment to the Lord. So picture the folks who support the candidate that you simply can't imagine leading the country and now answer whether you can still regard them as God's beloved children. If we find ourselves imagining that God can only redeem those like us, are we perhaps, just maybe, possibly, underestimating the capacity of the one who created light from darkness and raised Jesus from the dead? The issues at stake in this ele election are terribly important and reveal how deep the rift is within our country. And it matters who will lead this country after 2020 finally ends. But as many have reminded us over the past few weeks, if we cannot see each other as equally deserving of God's love and redemption and cannot therefore accord each other a measure of dignity and respect, then we have forgotten that at the root of human sin is precisely the willingness to judge others out of our own insecurity. And over and over again, we should remember that whenever you draw a line between who's in and who's out, you'll find Jesus on the other side. 
This week, Father Richard Rohr has reminded us that those who agree to carry and love what God loves, which is both the good and the bad, and to pay the price for its reconcil reconciliation within themselves, these are the followers of Jesus Christ. They are the leaven, the salt, the remnant, the mustard seed that God uses to transform the world. Righteousness is the opposite of wickedness. It is decency, honesty, honorableness, graciousness, civility, integrity. And the prophet Amos is forcing us to never forget that justice and righteousness are not luxuries to be relished in good times, but are essential elements of a faithful life, even in the most desperate of times. We are Easter people who follow Jesus the Christ who conquered death and created hope out of despair and resurrected life out of suffering and death. Our worship of God and our faith in the providence of God are good things, but we are only beloved of God when we act out those beliefs in how we care for each other. Only when we act with justice and mercy will God hear the melody of our harps. Only then will God let God's final justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Pray that may be so even in the darkness of our current times. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. Amen. Here's a hymn from Lift Every Voice and Sing. It's, it is well with my soul. I think it's number 188. Turning to page 358 in your prayer book, let us join together in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Today we are using Form 6 of the Prayers of the People. It may be found on page 392 of the Book of Common Prayer. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our family, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, this nation, and this world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless and the needy, for the peace and unity of the church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For our Archbishop Justin, Michael, our presiding bishop, Sam and Anne, our bishops, and Miriam, our vicar, and for all who serve in his God in his church. We especially want to pray today for all who are on St. Andrew's prayer list. We pray for all who are sick or in any need of or trouble, remembering especially the following members of our parish family. J.D. Griffin, Janelle Graham, Bill and Peggy Dance, Pauline McHugh, Sandy Marks, Madison Hayes, Roger Setzer, Joan Ling, Mike Lamb, Ruthie and Sarah Lamb, Wanda Passauer, Jim Jeffries, Liam Snipes, and Jessica Saxon. And for others for whom our prayers are desired, Helen Mollahan, Kali Cortori, the Reverend Jerry Laxley, Andrew and Gladys Muderary, Maxine Higgins, Doug Colley, Nancy Parham, 
Gordon and Shirley Buchanan. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of our life. And take a moment and be grateful for the blessings of today, this past week, this past year. We exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins, through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please join with me in the Lord's Prayer, um, either the contemporary or the traditional version. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, Tom. Peace, Nancy. Peace, Megan. We will conclude our worship with the prayer for spirit of spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is being celebrated. We desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We present to you our souls and bodies with the earnest wish that we may always be united to you. And since we cannot receive you sacramentally, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with all the love of our souls. Let nothing ever separate you from us. May we live in you and may you live in us, both in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God who made us, who loves us, and who travels with us be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace.